Welcome back everyone for part three of our DIY 48RE build. Today we are just going to go over building the forward clutch hub with the input shaft. Okay, so on your forward clutch hub here, you've ran this thing through the washer. You've done a good job making sure that it's clean of any clutch material in all of the snap ring grooves here and the clutch tabs, or the steel tabs I should say. So this thing's good and clean, ready to assemble. Same with the front apply piston, making sure that this thing is good and clean, ready to assemble. I like to give these a shake, make sure that check ball is moving, so I know these are good. Usually these are not a problem, but it is important to make sure that check ball moves freely. And then another thing to inspect is to make sure that uh, there isn't big grooves in this from the old Belleville spring. If there is, then you'll need to replace this because you're going to have excess tolerance from having the grooves in here. This one's good to go. We're ready to assemble with that. The next thing is we need to make sure our input shaft is clean. Yes, this is a brand new input shaft, but because it has an oil coating on it to keep it from rusting, it collects a lot of dust and dirt. If you can see that on here, I haven't cleaned this yet just so I can show you. So make sure that you take this thing and clean it good so that way you don't have any contaminants. Now when I'm cleaning this stuff, I'm a big fan of the white Scots rags. Uh, pretty much as long as it's a smooth machine surface, they don't really leave any fuzzy residue. You've got to be a little bit more careful with the cast areas. Uh, something cast iron like the pump, you kind of got to dab it. But other than that, these things don't put off uh, much of that fuzzy residue, which is important because we want to try to keep this as clean as possible. The filter's in there to do its job. So, you know, we're not working in a laboratory here, <laughs> but uh, we want to, you know, do our part to make sure that everything goes together as clean as it possibly can. Okay. And then the other thing here is you're going to have your gear in Belleville spring kit, which we will discuss when it goes together. Um, once again, it's a new part. It's got, you know, oil on it to keep it from rusting. So I like to go over that with the towel and just make sure that it's good and clean. Sometimes if I've already got transmission fluid on my hand, I'll run some transmission fluid on it and make sure that it is free of any of those oils and it has ATF on it. So now we want to make sure that our wavy snap ring is clean. It's another area to easily overlook. Just take your rag, wipe it down, and now this is ready to go together. Okay, so the next step is forward seal. The large outer forward seal is going to be really easy to identify in your kit because it's the only thing that's going to be around the size of the forward piston. But the inner one is a little bit harder to identify. This is the correct forward inner sealing ring. If you can see there, it has a lot of taper on the seal, it has a large sealing surface. This is the almost exact same diameter, but this one doesn't have nearly as much taper. That's because this is for the overdrive piston. You want to make very sure that you do not mix these up, because if you do, this will not seal up correctly, and it will not have proper line pressure. It'll burn your forwards up almost immediately. So the next thing you want to do with these seals is, even though these are brand new, out of the box, shouldn't have a problem with them, and 99.9% .9 of the time you never do, you want to just inspect them. So you want to roll them around, make sure that there's not a cut in them anywhere, make sure you don't see any bad, um, you know, pressing where, you know, there's some extra rubber tabs or anything. And then once you have determined that these are good, then you want to dip these in transmission fluid. Uh, these are, there's almost no seals in this that you want to install dry, except for the front pump seal. So any of the seals we want to make sure we dip in training fluid. And then the fluid that I have on hand while I'm assembling, I like to run the same kind of fluid that you're going to run in the transmission, which is Dexmerc. You do not want to run ATF plus four in these, so I would recommend uh, any of your clutch soaking and your seals, make sure that you're using Dexmerc. So to install this seal, this is a very specific way in which this needs to go. This taper part of it needs to face this way. So basically the way the fluid is coming in is the way that the taper needs to face so that way it can seal it off really well. So we're going to install this. Shouldn't need to use any tools for this. Do it by hand. So now you can see this side is tapered 
out inward and then this side has the part of it where you're going to catch it with the fluid to captivate the fluid and we're going to do the same thing on this side make sure that the taper is facing this way so basically the lip of these seals are capturing the fluid as it applies it this way okay so this is one of those few times where you're going to need a tool uh, that you probably don't have these are very cheap uh, this is a lip seal tool can you do it without this tool? Yes. Is it much harder and much easier to tear a lip seal? Yes. So go on Amazon and just get you a generic lip seal tool. Or if you're handy with a pair of scissors and you've got a plastic uh, spiral bound notebook, you could cut the cover off and make it into a circle. But basically, we're going to put our apply piston on the input shaft. And then you can see here where that sealing lip is going to need to go over the inside seal here on the input this is where my picks come back in handy but be very careful with this because we don't want to tear this lip seal we just want to nicely persuade it into here like so okay we've got it started and now we're going to do the rest of it with our outer lip seal so we're going to stick our lip seal tool in here we're going to keep pressure applied down on the forward piston and we're going to kind of work our way around until the lip seals are all in. And then when they are, this will go down really nice like that. And then you can pick it up and move it and make sure that you don't have any seal rolled or tore up. So this thing is ready for the forward clutch hub. So now to install the hub, you're just going to lift this up. You're going to spline it up with the input shaft here which this is a pretty precise fit. So you've got to get all your ducks in a row. And then now we're ready to put our Belleville spring in. It's another one of the deals where I set it off to the side here, but Belleville spring goes in first. So it's going to look like that. And then you're going to want to use the metal spacer that comes with this instead of the plastic one. So that's going to go in and that's going to look like that. And then the last step is to put our wavy snap ring back in. Very important that you use the wavy snap ring and not a flat in this because this is what's putting preload on the Belleville spring to keep it nice and tight like that. Now if you put yours together and it does have a little bit of slop because all of these machine parts have a little bit of variance, that's okay. You just don't want it to have like 50, 60 thousandths worth of slop. If, if you can move this around a little bit, it's okay. This one just happens to fit nice and perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to start installing our clutches and steels. Before we do this though, you want to make sure that you soak all of your clutches for at least 30 minutes in ATF. You never want to assemble a transmission with dry clutches. It will take a very long time for the clutch to soak properly and you will have premature clutch failure because of it. So we've soaked all of our forward clutches for at least 30 minutes and Pay very close attention if you have a 48 RE. If you have a 47, it doesn't matter. The direct clutch is exactly the same. But on a 48, this is a 93 tooth clutch. And so you have to use this because if you don't, it won't spline up on your front planetary. So now the next thing we need to do before we start putting clutches in is we need to put the stepped reaction plate in. Now I always take a red scotch bright pad and clean these up really good. And you want to make sure that there's not a bunch of uh, hot spots in it. If this thing has gotten really hot and it's you know all tore up or torched, you really want to order another one of these because this can affect the life of the forward clutch. And then always when we're putting anything together, we want to try to make sure it's as clean as possible, which is kind of a challenge because your hands are so dirty when you're working on this stuff that you're constantly uh, hitting everything with a rag before you put it in. So it's important that that goes in just like that. The flat side needs to be up against the clutch. If you put it in backwards or upside down, then the... Belleville spring isn't catching on this lip here and the whole clutch pack won't go together. So fortunately, this is pretty easy because you can't even assemble it like that, but make sure that it's nice and flat 
and orientated properly. So we're going to have four forward clutches and we're going to have three forward steels. One steel is going to be included with your Belleville spring kit and once again I just make sure that I have the oil wiped off of that thing and make sure that it is good and clean. And then your other two steels, you're going to use the thin steels. Uh, these are 70,000 steels and you want to make sure that you have all thin steels in the forward clutch. Uh, otherwise you won't be able to get the proper clearance and to get the clutch pack deep enough to where you don't have to worry about having planetary unsplining issues. You always want to run four clutches in the front. You never want to run five. Uh, if you try to fit five in here, the fifth one almost always comes unsplined. It gets hung up in the front planetary and then park and neutral become a forward gear and you get to pull it all back out and do it over again. So we got our first clutch in and then we're going to put our second steel in. And then our next clutch and our next steel. Our next clutch. And then our final steel and our final clutch. Now we are going to wipe off our hands because they're usually pretty dirty by now. And then you are going to take your reaction plate, which I also like to take a scuff pad to and clean really well. It's another thing to watch. If it's got a bunch of bad hot spots in it, you want to replace it. Uh, this one is perfectly fine. Another trick you can do is if you have hot spots on one side and not the other, uh, you can generally flip this upside down. The This one is in really good shape, so I don't need to do that, but uh, sometimes you can get away with saving one of these by flipping it upside down. So the top reaction plate is in. You'll see now that there's an area just big enough to get your snap ring in. And now this is where we're going to select our snap ring thickness. Now Garen sends a 62 thousandths snap ring. And on some applications, you have to run this. Sometimes you can run the stock one. Typically the stock one is an 83 thousandths. Let's see what this one was and somebody's been in here. This is a 75 thousandths. Um, my guess by looking at this is we can probably get away with the 75. Usually it seems like nine times out of 10, you can run the stock thickness, uh, but the 62 thousandths is as thin as it gets. And sometimes you do have to run that with the Belleville spring set up. So we're gonna put that in and make sure it's snapped in all the way. And then the first thing I'm gonna do before I put a feeler gauge or anything in this, is I'm going to see if I can move these clutches. If I can move these clutches really easily, then I know that uh, we're probably good. We do not want a bunch of forward clutch clearance. Uh, we only want this to be between 10 thousandths and 40 thousandths. And honestly, I don't even like 40 thousandths. I'm a big fan of 10 and 20 on these because they just need to be able to get enough lube in reverse. Other than that, they're just plied one time when you put it in drive or any forward gear, and they stay applied. They're not a shifting clutch pack, so the clearance isn't crucial for any shifts. But what the clearance is important for is the more clearance you have here, the more that Belleville spring has to try to bend and collapse every time to apply these. So if you've got these at 40 or 50 or 60 thousandths, that Belleville spring has to move that much before it even starts applying those. And eventually it'll wear it out. So I like to set these up tight. I'll put a feeler gauge and check this, but uh, by feeling it and all the ones I've done, I'm gonna say that thing's about 15 thousandths and it, that is perfect. So 10 to 20 is ideal. Uh, no more than 40 in any situation. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to put a new three tab washer in this. So you're gonna go to your kit, you're gonna get your thrust washers out, and I'll show you which one is the three tab. 
So in your kit, you're going to see uh, what some people call a Mickey Mouse washer, a uh, three-tab washer is a more common term for it. And then there's going to be three different selective sizes, a thin one, a thick one, and a medium one. In layman's terms, use the medium one, which is about 70 thousandths, uh, give or take. But that is the one that usually ends up being the proper one for your in play uh, and I like to use that one because it gets the front hub down into the forward planetary uh, as much as possible without creating any problems. Uh, sometimes the thin one is a little bit too much and it can sink it a little too far and then you run into possibly having your front clutch come unspline or the, the last clutch you put in. And this is also another reason why it's important to keep this forward clutch pack tight on the clearance is because the looser it is, the more it can travel, the easier it is for it to come unsplined. So 70 thousandths three tab is what we're gonna put in here. So this is one of those times where you're gonna have to use some trans gel, because if not, it's about impossible to keep it in there. I just put a nice little thin film on the back side, try to get rid of the excess the best I can and then you'll see that this is not just uh this only goes in one way and so I look at it and I try to see okay yeah I think it's that way sometimes I get it right like I did today sometimes you don't and then I'll spread a little bit of the trans gel that's on my finger on it and then now that will hold it in place because it's basically going to have to sit like this uh, until it's installed in the transmission so now we're all done on the back side here. We can flip it over and then we need to put a selective spacer here. This is a really important selective spacer. Back to like what we talked about with uh, the splining of the clutches on the front ring gear. This spacer is going to dictate how much the direct drum sits down onto the splines of the input shaft. So your direct clutch is going to spline up here. If you put a thick spacer in here, that first clutch that we put in the direct drum is going to be possibly too high and it can come unsplined from this. If it comes unsplined, it's basically doing nothing. So our six clutch drum becomes a five clutch drum and then usually it starts making metal. So I always run the 60 thousandths thick spacer here, which is the thinnest one that you can get. So now the last step before we're done with this is we just need to put our large ceiling ring here and then our two input shaft ceiling rings. So we're going to go to our seal kit and we're going to find the two brown plastic looking seals. We're going to do this just like the pump. We're going to put them in. Now these are not a locking interlocking. These just slide together like so. So you don't have to worry as much about that, but I do 180 degree orientate them, make sure I don't have any problems, and then I'll spin them around in a circle to make sure that the, you know, the inner locks aren't uh, flipped out on each other and going to break when you put it in the pump. And then the last thing we need is, this is a cast ceiling ring, it is an interlocking tab. So we want to note that and make sure that we don't break that. Now we're going to slide that down and put this on the larger ceiling ring area and make sure that those two tabs are interlocked and now our forward clutch and input shaft assembly is a hundred percent done we can slide that out of the way and start building our direct drum